Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays from Team Lab Padre. Thank you for tuning in to episode 42 of our SpaceX and Starbase weekly updates. I'd like to welcome back Thomas for this holiday release. He's got a good lineup for you today. So let's dig in. Thank you, Lab. Starting off this week, early on Friday morning, Starship 26 was fully stacked. This ship, which has no heat shield tiles or flaps, is believed to be a demonstration ship. In the afternoon, the launch infrastructure performed a simulated test launch, simultaneously retracting the booster and ship quick disconnects before swinging out the ship's QD arm. Upon closer inspection, we can observe in order the booster and ship quick disconnects, booster raptor disconnects, and alignment clamps are fully disengaged and retracted before the arm begins to move. A new propellant heat exchanger was delivered to Starbase on Monday morning. These devices, nicknamed Hippos, are used to chill down and densify liquid methane and oxygen. Additional new equipment was also delivered and installed at the orbital tank farm. The palletized subassemblies appear to be part of a high-pressure pneumatic control system. Thanks to RGV aerial photography, we have a photo with another view from above showing the equipment is located in front of the GSC-1 LN2 tank. It is believed that the air gas vaporizer lying down to the bottom right corner of the screen will be stacked on top of the black fan shown here as the third assembly on the right. Moving up, here's a view of underneath the orbital launch mount, as viewed from the previous week on the 15th, with the formwork and rebar nearly ready for pouring. By Tuesday, late in the evening, the final liquid oxygen tank section quad was attached to booster 10, with the only remaining task yet completed is attaching the LOX tank to the finished thrust section located in tent 1. Booster 9 began its first crowdproofing test on Wednesday at the dedicated crowdproofing station plumbed into the orbital launch site's propellant storage tanks. The test battery began with filling the liquid oxygen tank. After completing proof testing and unloading the liquid oxygen tank, the methane tank was loaded and tested next. Headed over to Sanchez, we can see concrete has just been poured at the new 48,000 square foot inventory tent. This is for a ramped loading and unloading dock, allowing tractor trailers to have their cargoes transported at the same height as the tent's interior floor. Also noteworthy in this shot, at the gas liquefaction plant are the eight new cooling towers and the white painted cold box laying down on its side. This equipment is believed to be here to separate out the other processed streams of cryogenic liquids like LOX or argon. Lastly, for the aerial shots, we have an updated view of the Massey's testing site, where we have a view of the can crusher and 26.1 strapped ready for testing action. To the left of that shows the three tank foundations have been prepped for the three horizontal tanks on the far right to finally be placed. These cryogenic tanks will be used to help future testing activities at the Massey's site. Finally, to the bottom right, we can see what's left of a concrete foundation. These are the last vestiges of the former Massey's gun range, and it's bygone era at this site, even as all of the dirt perms have now been removed. Things were fairly busy in Cape Canaveral this week. Friday began with the launch of O3B M Power 1 and 2 satellites to geostationary orbit. Saturday saw the launch of another Falcon 9, carrying Starlink Group 4-37 into orbit on booster 1058 for its record-setting 15th flight. SpaceX's recovery ship Doug returned to port on Tuesday having successfully recovered both fairing halves from the Starlink 4-37 launch. Recovery ship Bob returned to Port Canaveral on Wednesday with only one fairing half and a shortfall of Gravitas in tow with booster 1067-8 on board. Crosby skipper towed just to read the instructions into port with booster 1058 on deck following the Starlink 4-37 launch. It wasn't until Thursday that booster 1067 was lowered for transport and returned to Roberts Road, making way for booster 1058-15. Late in the evening, booster 1058 finally made landfall at the docks. The booster was placed on the leg retraction platform following the path of 1067-8 and the many other boosters before it. Being a flight leader of 15 launches, it will head back for further inspection and maintenance and is assumed to be sent out for a 16th flight. And there we have it, another weekly update of Starbase Texas and Cape Canaveral, Florida, brought to you by Lab Padre. Have a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. We hope to see you all again next week.